Okay, in this video, we're going to look into loading a hex file into the Atmega 328P microcontroller, which is on the Arduino Nano and the Arduino Uno. Now, if you code in assembly language and you run your code through an assembler using the AVR Studio software, after the build, one of the output files will be a hex file. Now, this hex file has to be loaded into the microcontroller to run your program. Now to do this, we use the 6-pin header, which we see on the Arduino Nano, and also on the Arduino Uno. This is the ICSP header, in Circuit System Programming. So we hook up our programmer to this header, and it will, pull, it will pull the reset pin low, which is one of the pins on the header. And when the reset is pulled low, it will disable any program running on the microcontroller. And it will go into a special programming mode, where it could download the hex file into the flash memory using the SPI protocol. Okay, here are the three items that you need to program a hex file onto the Atmega 320P microcontroller. So the first item is the hex file itself, and you need that on board your computer. So for this demo, I'm using eforth220.hex, so that's my hex file. And it has a .hex extension, and it's just basically a text file. You could actually read it with Notepad. Now the second item is the AVR Studio, and that's the software that you need for programming. That's what I use. Now the latest one is Atmel Studio 7, so they've changed the name. Now Microchip has bought out Atmel, so there's been a lot of changes to Atmel. Now the third item is the programmer itself. It's AVRISP Mark II Programmer. Now Atmel doesn't make this programmer any anymore because there's been so many knockoffs uh, out there that they couldn't compete. So they've quit making it, but if you look for an AVRISP Mark II equivalent, uh, programmer, then that will work. So these are the three items you need to program a hex file into the Atmega 320P microcontroller. Okay, here's my programmer. This is the AVR ISP Mark II programmer. Now this is the original one made by Atmel, which they don't make anymore. So the equivalent will look the same. Now the output cable has a six pin female IDC connector on it, which plugs into the microcontroller board. And on the other end of the programmer is your USB cable, which actually powers uh, the programmer. Now on Arduino Uno, you have your 6-pin connector here. And so you just plug it in this way. And you need a USB connector connected to the Uno to power the Uno, because the programmer will not power the Uno board. So we need both connectors. We need a USB into the programmer and a USB in, into the Uno board. So that's how you set it up to program uh, an Arduino Uno. Okay, here's the setup to program a hex file into the Arduino Nano. So I have my programmer, and it's being powered up by my USB cable, which is plugged into my computer. Now the output cable is plugged into the ICSP connector, the six pin connector on the Arduino Nano, and it's plugged in in this direction. Now the Nano has to have a USB cable connected to it for it to be powered because the programmer will not power the Arduino Nano. So this is your basic connection. So all I have to do is run the software to program the hex file into the Arduino Nano. Okay, I have my AVR programmer connected to my Arduino Nano and they're both plugged into my USB ports on my computer. And I have AVR Studio running. So the first thing we do, we go up to Tools and we select AVR Programming and we'll get this dialog box. If you look at the very top left under Tool, we can see it's recognized the AVR ISP Mark II programmer. So it sees that online. And the device is ATmega328P. Now if yours doesn't say that, you could do this drop-down list and select ATmega328P. And the interface is ISP and we hit Apply. And there's our ISP clock and you can set it for 125 kilohertz. That's the speed it's going to program the microcontroller through the SPI port. So the slower it is, the more reliable it will be. And under device ID, we could actually read the device ID of the microcontroller. And we're getting indication back, so we're actually reading the microcontroller. There's the device ID, and there's our target voltage. Now if we go to the very left under lock bits, we could read the lock bits. And it's read the lock bits, and it's FF. That's what we need. If it's not FF, you could change it and then hit program. And we could use the we could read the fuses. There's your extended high and low fuses. So the extended fuse is uh, hex FD. Your high fuse is hex D8, and your low fuse is hex FF. 
Now those are my fuse values for my program. I'm programming my fourth operating system. Now there is an online calculator that you could actually look up the fuses and you could set them up for your for your application. Now next we'll go to memories. That's where we're going to find our a hex file. So you could browse for your hex file. Now mine's on my desktop and there's your browse button and then you could browse on your computer where your hex file is and then it will, it will come into this text box here. And use check mark verify device after programming and check mark eva erase device before programming and then hit program. Now she's programming the microcontroller, the, the AT Mega 320P on the Arduino Nano. And you can see it's indicating it's erasing OK, it's programming flash OK, now it's just verifying it. Now I've got the verify. So everything looks good. So we have we, now we have programmed and verified the hex file. That has been programmed into our AT Mega 320P on board Arduino Nano. Okay, my hex file e4th220.hex has been loaded onto my Arduino Nano. I have my Nano powered up, up and running, connected to my computer through the USB port. So my fourth operating system, my fourth programming language, is up and running on my Nano, and I can gain access to it through the serial port. So I have TerraTerm running, and I'm I'm on COM11. And I'm running at 19.2k baud rate. So if I press the reset button on my Nano, there's my hello screen for my 328e fourth. So if we look at uh, we look at the dictionary. We could see all the words in the dictionary. There's all my fourth words. We could actually write a program. So colon puts it into compile mode, and we type the name of the program. We'll call it greeting. And we'll do a carriage return to get a new line. And then we could send it uh, some some text. So we'll go hello world. And a semicolon takes it out of compile mode, puts it into interpret mode. Then we type flush. Now we'll put the program into flash memory because we've been working in RAM. Now it's going to be put into flash. Now if you look at the dictionary again, you can see greeting. It's in the dictionary. So if I type greeting, name of the program, it will run it, so there's your hello world. So we can do some math, we go 3, 2, plus, gives us 5, or 3, 2, multiply, gives us 6. That's a little bit of reverse Polish notation, a little bit of math, fourth math. So now we can go ahead and write some programs in the fourth programming language. Okay, that was a little demo how I upload a hex file into my Arduino Nano. So now from the keyboard I could send the commands. I could turn on the LED. I could turn off the LED. I could blink the LED. So now I could do all this using the fourth programming language.